Hi subscribers, welcome to Pisces 2019 video number two, uh, Sun in Pisces. Of course, I'll begin with uh, the transition from Aquarius to Pisces, so you kind of understand that shift. And uh, it'll be applicable to any planets moving from those that from one sign into the next, but also specifically for the sun this month. And then I'll talk about some of the sun's aspects and patterns during the month, including the two uh, lunation charts we'll include. So first let's talk about when the sun's in Aquarius, which is where we have been for 30 days, the giant flashlight in the sky or the sun emphasizes um, innovation and change and uh, stepping back to get perspective, uh, objectivity. Uh, maybe an intellectual, right, it's an air sign, an intellectual pursuit or way of approaching things, um, taking things less personally, um, envisioning possibilities. It's not necessarily about stream of consciousness, brainstorming imagination. It's more about focusing and getting light, what I call lightning bolts from the gods uh, associate with the Uranus uh, Aquarius archetype. So we see new solutions sometimes suddenly to old problems and, and existing situations. And of course, any planet moving through the lens of Aquarius also shows us in what way we don't feel free or how we may have gotten ourselves into certain stuck patterns or crystallized uh, habits. It, and we will see from a more objective place, oh, that doesn't work, how can I change it? And then that clever, innovative uh, Aquarian objectivity can come in. Now, one of the things that happens with an ingress to Aquarius, when a planet moves into Aquarius, in other words, is that somebody may feel very impatient with how things are, or how others are, or how the self is, or what choices one is making. And so there can be some stress with Aquarius if we don't choose to change. Now, with this archetype, there is also a forward-looking um, part of the process where we say this is how things are today but what do I want the future to look like and if you hear me uh, if you notice when I teach about the 11th house I always talk about you know looking ahead like having a vision of where I want my life to be in two months and five years and ten years kind of uh, setting long-term goals based in your values and your innovation and so in Aquarius you might notice you feel stuck or put in a box and you might really uh, crave freedom to play in the future, to be independent, to individuate, to develop your own unique talents and gifts, and to find a useful way, you know, to, to bring them to bear. Because, you know, healthy Aquarius energy also wants to give a gift to the collective or to society. There's the idea of the inventor. Some inventors, I'm sure, are driven by, you know, money from patents or whatever licensing deals but 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 the spirit of the inventor is to create a novel solution that will help people so there's that humanitarian philanthropic you know investing in the community thing that's very important with aquarius energy too but if you don't change and cr to create freedom for yourself then you can't develop your own individual gifts what i call your own individual genius and then you can't Bring it. So there's a whole chain of things with this archetype where if you don't, you know, free yourself from what stifles you, then you can't get to that creative, visionary, inventor, innovator side. So if in that process uh, of realizing things need to change, but you're not sure how to do it, sometimes people become rebels, right? So rebellion uh, and revolution are certainly parts of this archetype as well. And I want you to think about the difference between rebellion and revolution. Uh, rebellion is when you rashly, you know, reject the status quo. Revolution is when you try to turn over the status quo. Revolution tends to be a little less rash and sudden and drastic. Rebellion is like, you know, we have this idea, um, a rebel with a cause, without a cause. A rebel with a cause is a revolutionary. A rebel without a cause is somebody who's just reacting. So these are parts of this archetype as well. Are you using your cleverness to think ahead? Are you, do you have a plan? Do you have a novel solution, a, a vision, an image of how things could be? Or are you freaking out because you just can't handle the being boxed in or the rules or the way things are? So these are parts of this archetype. And, um, you know, emphasizing that it's an air archetype, um, when we move into Pisces, which is water, everything's drastically different. And of course, every sign, you know, all 
two adjacent signs are very different from the others. And so Aquarius, of course, like I said, it's air, it's, you know, intellectual, communicative, thinking, imagining, ob objective. Pisces, the lens of Pisces, uh, to contrast it, is about merging and surrendering and, you know, uh, adapting, right, flowing. I always think of um, a Pisces energy as uh, needed, the planet working through the lens of Pisces needs to adjust, adapt to what's happening around. When I see people with strong Pisces energy, sometimes I'll tell them, like in readings, not just on the street, on the street, but in readings, I'll say, um, you know, your, what are your skills is you walk into a room, you sense the currents and you adapt. Like you find out how to navigate, how to work this room one way or the other, maybe to escape being noticed maybe to get something done, but the idea is being able to understand the bigger thing you're within, you find yourself within, and perhaps adapting. So in Pisces, we merge, we surrender, we let go of control. It's the last sign of the zodiac, of course. So in Aries, we start with a beginning, and of course, we'll cover that in a month in detail, the transition from Pisces to Aries. Uh, in Taurus, you solidify, you pick the things that matter and you take them forward and leave other things behind like you trim. In Gemini, you explore your environment. You know, in Cancer, you put down roots. In Leo, you play and you express and you find your gifts. In, the, you know, in uh, Virgo, you, you, um, you figure out what's useful. Anyway, all the way around to this wheel, when it gets to Aquarius, it's how can I make society better? Well, I have to work with others in order to make that happen because nobody can create the future she wants to live in by herself. Then we get to Pisces and you gotta let it all go. For some people, this is peaceful and it's medicine and it's finally I can relax. And for other people, it's very hard. <laughs> most people, most humans for the last few thousand years have been taught to be up in their heads, at least in Western cultures, um, have been taught to be up in the head and have relied on logic and the mind and the perceptions of the linear logical mind. So when it gets to Pisces, you find out you can't control things. So in Aquarius, you're working hard to move ahead. Uh, in Pisces, you realize you gotta let something go. So it's, very, it's a very different energy. It's mutable water, right? Instead of like Aquarius is fixed air. I have a purpose, I have a goal, I'm moving into the future. Mutable water says, oh, I don't have a choice but to conform or find out what the, what the currents are where I am. So um, for some, it's a time of relaxing, the sun in Pisces. For some, it's a time of, you know, not the objectivity of Aquarius, but the kind of zoom, zoomed out bird's eye view of a spiritual perspective, like that like can come through in mediumship and channeling uh, when you talk to spirit guides or set of masters or angels, or uh, you know, spirits of the dead or whatever. It can be that kind of bird's eye view, which is what I always try to do with uh, the, the messages from Jehudi. He's always trying to give you a higher perspective, to like a zoomed out so you can see the bigger context. Um, for some people, they will find that they don't want to keep doing something or do anything. For some people, they'll realize they're really tired and they need to rest and, and let their mind uh, tune out a little bit. So don't be surprised during this month if you're not tracking details in the same way. Uh, we also will have a Mercury go retrograde in the last degree of Pisces is where it will station. And I'll cover that in video uh, number three, the next one, along with Venus and Mars, of course. Um, so we are going to have some of that business, you know, go on. Uh, Mercury at the start of the month is with Neptune. So there's kind of this whole thing about Piscean energy and how we're going to deal with it and approach it. Um, but don't be surprised and don't be hard on yourself if you can't pay attention quite as much. Now I recommend, and I endeavor to do this, grounding, right? Staying in the body, feet firmly planted on the floor uh, with my emotional energetic field connected to the earth so I'm a little more stable and I'm not talking so quickly nobody, nobody can understand me because that happens. I'm not grounded um, so that I can be intentional, right? so that when you find your mind wanting to relax, you can still stay intentional, but also rest. Also let certain things go. The, the teaching of a planet through the lens of Pisces is, you know what, things are fine the way they are. You don't, you don't have to freak out. You don't have to do, do, do. You don't have to rush. That's what the sun in Pisces wants to show you over the next 30 days. 
everything's fine. And your brain, which you've been conditioned over many lifetimes to believe is right, will get stressed. So if you're trying to accomplish something and others aren't taking it seriously, change your approach during this month and recognize that if nobody else is forcing what you're trying to force with you, you know, like if nobody else is really pushing the thing you're trying to push, maybe take that as a cue to look at how invested you are in what you're doing and why you want to do it. What's your motivation? Because the sun and Pisces also can show us that bird's eye view truth. Our intuition can be heightened a little bit. Uh, what am I fighting here? Am I fighting a feeling I don't want to feel? Am I uh, doing, making choices and acting and creating things to try to stave off fear or panic or dr grief or dread? Grief or dread, sorrow, whatever. Am I busy to try to stop, uh, not have to feel, to stop myself from feeling? So, um, so in the solar month of Pisces, we have a chance to tune into the vibrations is where I want to take all this combo, uh, this explanation. Tune into the vibrations. Why am I doing this? What's really happening? And also, is it worth doing? Now, I talked a lot about that recently in terms of Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn with Saturn joining Pluto in Capricorn saying, wait a minute, is what you're planning worth doing? Because Saturn wants um, clear, constructive, decisive action that is worth doing to create a future worth living in, right? Saturn co rules Aquarius. But the worth of Pisces is vibrational resonance. And I always say in these videos, is it true? And your brain will say, well, I've decided that I would like to do this, so it seems true. No, 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 no. Not what your brain is forcing and your computer logic is, no, no. Does it feel right is another way of, of looking at this. Does it feel right? I even just did this this morning. I have four, well, four projects that I'm actively working on as in writing. And um, they're not books, they're like courses and, and, and uh, everything. And, and I, I felt really good and I worked on one, I worked on another one. And then I sat down and I paused and I said, and I felt into, this is what I want to suggest you do. I imagined what I might do next. I felt, is this true? Is that the direction I'm going in? And um, so I did another thing for another you know, 20 or 30 minutes, and then I was finished. But I felt into, did it feel right? Did it feel true? Could I see myself doing that? There's an imagination thing here with uh, Neptune and Jupiter co-ruling Pisces. Um, you know, will you let yourself open up to imagine so that you can sense ahead, is this the right thing for me? This is, you know, your guides, that's how they communicate with you or for many people. Not everybody hears a voice or receives a message in a dream or even gets a reading and the person says, look, your guides are saying this. You know, it's not always that specific. They're tied into your energetic field, your consciousness, your emotions. They're tied into your intuition. So um, you might... Um, benefit this month from letting yourself flow, imagine, think about things, not just force the logic and worry about a plan, but allow something to unfold, allow the currents in your own mind to flow, the waves to undulate, to ebb and flow. So, um, so that's the idea. Uh, Aquarius, remember, fixed air, the mind has a grip on something. To Pisces, mutable water, oh, I just have to let it go. If you can let yourself relax, you will feel into what is real and true. 